Hi, this is the Occupy Ukiah report for March 8th, 2012. My name is Charlie Vaughn. Welcome to uh, show number two. We have a lot going on with Occupy Ukiah this week. A um, little introduction to what we're doing and when we're doing it. Um, Occupy Ukiah at present is a pretty small group. We are um, really starting to get organized. We have a general assembly meeting every Saturday at 10 a.m. at Alex Thomas Park. You'll see our little uh, pop-up canopy there. It's right during the farmer's market. Uh, you're welcome to come and drop in. It's open to the public. You can uh, speak if you like. You can ask questions. We'll have some literature to pass out. Um, it's really a great way to plug in and find out what Occupy is up to. We also have what we call our direct action group meeting um, Sunday at 11 a.m. and we're meeting at the MEC, the Mendocino Environmental Center, and that's uh, a little bit more nuts and bolts um, planning about what we're going to be doing um, in the next few days. Um, just generally, Occupy Ukiah is working on uh, several main topics right now. We've been since, um, oh, October or so working on uh, preventing Walmart from expanding. Uh, Walmart is uh, wanting to expand to a 24-hour uh, super center and we're trying to uh, prevent that. We'll be giving you some information about that a little bit later in the show. Um, we're also working on um, the foreclosure issue in America and the state and there's going to be a big demonstration on Monday and that will be our main uh, main topic tonight and we'll be getting to that in just a few minutes. Uh, we also have petitions uh, that we are signing with Move to Amend. Move to Amend the Constitution. Corporations are not persons and money is not speech. Uh, these um, are some really great um, petitions and you'll be seeing people out and about signing, uh, getting people to sign those petitions around town soon. We have not received them yet, but we'll be, uh, we'll be doing that soon. Um, we're also working on the nuclear issue. We have petitions in hand. You may see people out and about around Ukiah, and these petitions are um, demanding uh, that we that the two nuclear um, reactors in California be shut down, especially in light of the Fukushima disaster. There's no sense to be taking those kinds of chances anymore. Uh, with our with our wildlife, with our ecology, with our people, with the planet, and all the people around the planet. Um, those are the three main large things that we are working on with Occupy Ukiah. And we are trying to set up um, a well-organized um, organization that we can invite the public into when we have a demonstration. So you can come hold up a sign, you can make phone calls, you can come to a meeting, uh, you can go to a planning commission meeting or city council and support the cause and then go home. You don't have to be uh, coming to meetings every week like some of us are. And if you do want to, you are more than welcome to plug in. You can always find out information about what's happening with Occupy Ukiah at OccupyUkiah.org. And it's a really great website. Um, we are really getting it rolling, and, and a, a thousand thanks to our, um, our tech man, uh, Tom Ray, has been doing a great job on getting our website up and running, and with lots of great links to all of the uh, issues that we're working on right now, and it's uh, chock full of information, and there will be more to come. So that's kind of a little... Um, introduction to Occupy Ikea. We're going to be putting this, this report out weekly and uh, this time I can't tell you that there's going to be an official time slot. That will come soon, but watch for it on the community calendar. Um, another thing that, that you can watch for uh, on the airwaves is on KMEC, which is at 105.1, we have the Occupy the Airwaves radio show, uh, five, five o'clock on Wednesdays from five to six, and that um, has been 
already on twice and it's a great way to get in touch with what's going on with the Occupy movement locally and nationally and also they'll be playing some great Occupy related uh, music. Um, be sure to check that out at KMEC on Wednesdays at 5 o'clock. So that's our basic introduction and I want to get right to um, sort of the hottest topic that we're working on today and that is the foreclosure situation in America and the foreclosure situation here in the state of California and the county of Mendocino. Um, if you go to our website OccupyUkiah.org um, there's a great press release that tells some good bullet points and talking points about the whole foreclosure situation <clears throat> and then there's also um, some links that you can go to and some other websites. Let me read some of the information um, about our demonstration that's going to be held on Monday, March 12th, and that will be at the Mendocino County Recorder's Office, which is at 501 Low Gap Road. <clears throat> that's right there at uh, the city buildings, uh, Low Gap and Bush. You'll see uh, lots of people coming there from all around the county will be having signs. Please come and join in if you would like to protest the foreclosure situation in the state and the nation. This is going to be a statewide demonstration in all the counties around the state. People will be demonstrating in front of their recorder's offices and this is also going to be a national demonstration in front of recorder's offices nationally. Now why are we gathering at the recorder's office? That's because that's where the information is. Um, the information that we are talking about is the fraudulent foreclosure practices that have been uh, practiced by the banks and the mortgage companies. We're finding out that up to 80 percent, nearly 80 percent, I think it's 78 percent, of most foreclosures have been done illegally. They're not recorded properly, they're cutting corners, they're actually entering false information, thus you had heard about robo signings where people were just signing off on mortgages and they hadn't even read them. Um, there's a lot of fraudulent practices, there are crimes that were committed and we want to find out who's responsible for these crimes. We want to name names and the way to do that is to demand an audit. We need to have the information that is in the recorder's office audited by the recorders themselves. The recorder who is the Mendocino County recorder is um, not the person who we are accusing of committing these crimes. It's actually the mortgage people. The recorder only takes the information and records it um, and it is there that that information is held. Let me read a few things about California's foreclosure crisis. 1.2 million foreclosures have happened since 2008. 1.2 million in the country. In the state of California, there are 500,000 more foreclosures that are expected just this year. That's half a million foreclosures that we can expect this year if nothing is done. What will that do to our economy? What will that do to the people in those houses? Um, that's a huge hit for any state or county to take. California is the hardest hit of all 50 states in the country. <clears throat> One in every five foreclosures in the U.S. is in the state of California. So we are uh, on top of it and we're hitting it hard here in Mendocino County. By the end of 2012, foreclosures will cost California homeowners and local governments an estimated $650 billion, that's billion with a B, dollars. 650,000 million dollars if you want to put it that way. That's a lot of money. I think that is probably uh, more money than we are in debt for here in California. Um, 
I don't have that as a hard fact. We'll try to get that next time. But $650 billion would go a long way in the state towards doing things that we want to do to improve things rather than all the cuts that we've been having to go through. Another fact, 50% of California homeowners with a mortgage owe more on their mortgages than their homes are worth. They're underwater. Over half of the homeowners are underwater with their mortgages. This is a kind of a dire situation. So we have three points that we are petitioning the California legislature, Attorney General Kamala Harris, and the county governments to take action on. Number one, conduct independent audits of the foreclosures over the past five years at every county, county recorder's office. The county recorders have been willfully deceived through falsified and fraudulent findings, fraudulent filings by the lending institutions. The California governor and legislature should approve emergency funding for these audits in order to uncover the full extent of the foreclosures and fraud by Wall Street investment firms and banks. They are reluctant to do these audits because it's expensive. Well, <clears throat> it's probably one of the best uses of our state money that we could think of right now because we can find out exactly how many of these um, foreclosures have been recorded fraudulently and put a stop to them and also get these people in front of a judge and jury and get them behind bars where they belong. If, uh, if any one of us was to steal this amount of money, they'd lock us up and throw away the key. Well, there are people out there right now doing business who have committed these crimes and they are still walking around free and screwing us for our money. It's time for us to do something about it. Number two, declare an immediate, indefinite moratorium on all foreclosures until these audits are completed and the state legislature passes foreclosure reform leg legislation. Like we said, 500,000 foreclosures are on the slate for 2012 in California. We're already three months into the year. So the, the prudent thing to do right now, the obvious thing to do, is put a moratorium on all foreclosures. Stop it right now, because a lot of them have been filed fraudulently. <clears throat> so let's find out exactly what the facts are on these. It makes no sense to allow foreclosures to continue when every county recorder's office is potentially a crime scene. All the facts are there. All we need to do is audit those facts. We need to spend a little bit of money, find out the details. So a moratorium on foreclosures is, is imperative. Number three, <clears throat> do justice. Foreclosure fraud by Wall Street investment firms and banks must be prosecuted. The rule of law means justice for all. Attorney General Kamala Harris and county district attorneys must prosecute those who have committed these crimes. Even if their status as bank and investment executives appear to place them above the law, they're not above the law. It's time that we do something about it. The people are the ones who lead. If we stand up and make enough noise these people cannot hide any longer. Let's put their names on signs. Let's point out who they are. Let's get them into court and discourage people from doing any more of this such activity. They're eating the heart out of our economy. This is probably one of the main things that has driven the economy down since 2008 and has driven people to the streets. Why do you think we're out there? <laughs> it's practices like this. So while the Mendocino County Recorder's Office may be the crime scene, it's only following the procedures outlined in California state law, and the recorder is not to blame. <clears throat> if there are any changes in the future county recorder foreclosure procedures, it'll have to be changed at the state legislative, le legislative level. Tell your local state representatives to create foreclosure laws that will protect homeowners from foreclosure fraud. 
tell the Mendocino County Supervisors and District Attorney to lobby the state legislature and Attorney General to create laws that will stop foreclosure. Now I heard that they passed a law in Las Vegas where they had um, lots of foreclosures where uh, when you uh, recorded um, a mortgage, you had to sign an affidavit that everything in that mortgage, the whole process, was in fact true. And their foreclosures dropped by 75% as soon as everybody was forced to sign such an affidavit. That's very interesting. I wonder how that happened. Well, if we, if we make sure that everybody has to sign an affidavit that says the information within is true under penalty of law, um, I think that should do it right there. So let's encourage our legislators to do things like this. Um, for more information on foreclosures, um, you can go to foreclosure, <laughs> this is a long one, foreclosurepreventionzones.com. They have some wonderful stuff. I think these people are out of Petaluma. Um, <clears throat> now, this demonstration will be Monday, March 12th, in front of the recorder's office. People from all over the county are going to be coming. People from Fort Bragg um, and around the county will be joining us. And it's going to be a pretty exciting thing, and we hope that you will get involved with us. We're going to be making signs for this demonstration on Saturday. The, uh, that would be Saturday the 10th at our General Assembly meeting. We have our General Assembly at Alex Thomas Park, right there in the middle of the plaza. And if you want to come and help us make signs for this demonstration, we'll have some ideas for good signs to make. And uh, we'll have some pens. If you have any other sign making material and, and equipment, uh, please bring it and we will uh, we'll really have a good time doing that. And we can talk about some of the issues. Also, on Sunday, we will be having our direct action meeting at the MEC, Mendocino Environmental Center. We'll be talking over logistics of the demonstration, what to do, when it's going to happen. I believe there's going to be a press conference. We'll get into some of those details on Sunday. So if you're really interested, you want to get in on the organization of this, come and join in on Sunday. We do everything by consensus. We have a facilitator. And we'd love to have you come and take part in that process with us. Um, I think that's about all I have to say at this point um, for the foreclosure um, issue. <clears throat> it's a big one. This is what Occupy all across the country is designed for. This is why we organize. This is what we're doing. We are finding the hot spots and we're jumping out and acting and we're putting pressure on our legislature. We're putting pressure on our representatives. Those people in Congress, in the State Congress and the National Congress, they are not royalty. They are our public servants. We put them there. They answer to us. If we sit on the couch and drink beer and eat chips and do nothing, they will do what they want. If we let them know what we want them to do, if we demand it, they're going to have to do it. So let's gather together. Let's use our Occupy organization and do something. OK. Um, the next thing we're going to look at is um, our uh, Walmart. We are trying to prevent Walmart from putting in a 24-hour uh, superstore. Let me check my time here. We're looking good. Um, Walmart wants to, to do a superstore expansion. Um, we have lots of information on our website as to why that's a bad idea. And one thing that you can do that's very interesting, if you would like to look up online a really nice little movie that it's very interesting and easy to get on YouTube called The High Cost of Low Prices. If you just go to your uh, uh, search engine, uh, Google might be a way of doing it. The high cost of low prices, punch that in and that movie will come up. That will give you lots of information about why we don't want to have a Walmart superstore in our city 
and why we perhaps might even not even want a Walmart in our city. First off, we want to prevent them from expanding. So we've been putting a lot of uh, attention on this matter at the uh, City Planning Commission meetings and the City Council meetings. There's going to be a City Planning Commission meeting Wednesday, March 14th at 6 p.m. Now they will be basically uh, deliberating and they will be giving instructions to staff on how they are to proceed. But they will re be reviewing the entire issue of the Walmart expansion. There will be no public input. The public input period has ended. So what we are encouraging people to do is come to that meeting on Wednesday, March 14th at the Civic Center, the City Council Chambers there, 6 p.m., fill the seats and witness their process. We want them to know that we are against this expansion and we're watching. We are watching their process of decision making and don't forget us. So it's very important that we show up and watch. It can be uh, kind of boring, but we can have fun together. So I hope you'll join us um, in doing that. Um, and that's pretty much it for the Walmart, uh, Walmart situation right now. We're really hoping that this expansion does not go through. It can really hurt our small town. It will probably take out one or two grocery stores um, in our little town here. And uh, those are good paying jobs. And Walmart starts people at 7 or $8 an hour. Uh, that's not a living wage. Let's move on. We uh, are going to talk a little bit about education. Uh, some of you may hear, have heard in the news recently that 200 and something students were arrested in Sacramento. Uh, they were protesting the uh, high cost of education and the, uh, <clears throat> the raising of the tuition costs. Um, let's, let's talk about the education price here for a minute. Uh, we have some information here that um, Greg, one of our uh, Occupy members, provided. Please ask yourself this question. Is, it, is education just for the rich or is it for everyone? Occupy Ikaya thinks it should be for everyone. Here are some facts about the issue. UC campuses, the price of education on UC campuses today has gone up 21% in one year. That's a huge, huge jump. Over the past four years, California state lawmakers have cut more than 1.5 billion, with a B, dollars from state colleges and universities. That's a lot of money. Over the past 30 years, California built one university, only one university, and has built over 20 prisons. So, you can see where this is heading. We don't want to put people in college anymore. We'll just put them in prison. Is that cheaper? Is that better for our society? Uh, answer, ask yourself this question. Does it make sense that in the last 30 years we built one university and 20 prisons? Maybe if we recover some of that $650 billion uh, <laughs> tied up in the, uh, in the foreclosures, we could use some of that money to improve our education system so people won't have to go to prison. And we could shut those prisons down and use those buildings for something to help our society. If this issue is important to you, please call our governor. Governor Jerry Brown can be reached at 916-445-2841. You'll see the graphic there on the screen. You can email Governor Jerry Brown at gov.ca.gov .gov and tell him no more cuts in education. Enough is enough. Enough is too much. We have gone way too far. We want education for everyone, unlike what you heard our uh, wonderful Republican candidate Rick Santorum say in response to... Uh, Barack Obama's uh, State of the Union address, uh, Obama said he wanted to uh, make it so that a college education was available to everyone. Rick Santorum's response to that was, what a snob. 
he said that, that Obama was being a snob for wanting everybody to have the chance to go to college. He said that Obama's uh, plan was to get everybody to be programmed or brainwashed or whatever by some liberal professor. Um, come on, people. But what that tells you is the kind of opposition we're up against in this world today. Um, a lot of people think that education is for the rich, it's for the elite, um, and it's not for everybody. Well, I think that people can make that choice themselves individually, whether you go to college. But the opportunity should not be made by anybody else. The opportunity should always be there for all of us. If we want to go on, it should be affordable. So that's, um, that's a little word about education today. Um, and um, we're going to start wrapping up here. Uh, you can always find more information. You can check out the uh, issues that we're working on at occupya.org, occupyukaya.org. Um, it's also occupyukaya.info. Both of those will take you to the same site, and you can, uh, you can keep up with what we're doing. So to wrap up, I'm going to read a couple quotes uh, by one of my favorite authors, Howard Zinn. He wrote uh, the People's, um, the People's um, History of the United States, a great book sitting on my nightstand. If you just open it up, you can read some amazing things. The quote that I would like to read today is, Protest beyond the law is not a departure from, demo from democracy. It's absolutely essential to it. Protest beyond the law is not a departure from democracy. It's absolutely essential to it. So if we have to break the law, we will, if it is necessary. Another good one. And this will be our closing quote for the day from Howard Zinn. We don't have to engage in grand heroic actions to participate in the process of change. Small acts, when multiplied by millions of people, can transform the world. And that's what I'm encouraging everybody watching to do, is to engage in small acts to improve your world. Don't just sit and wish somebody else would do it for you. Come and join your Occupy Ukiah group. We welcome you. And uh, we maybe see you at the GA on Saturday, 10 o'clock, Alex Thomas Park. And I guess that's all we have to say for today. We're signing off. This is Charlie Vaughn saying, see you around town. <laughs>